Hi, this is a short video to introduce the Smother tool that's been developed here at the University of Sheffield. Smother provides modified decision and condition coverage for Erlang programs. So we'll start the video by introducing code coverage in general, showing the standard OTP module called Cover that provides line coverage for Erlang. Then we'll go on and show how Smother expands on that and gives a much more extensive and rigorous analysis. So this is a very basic Erlang program. All it's supposed to do is take two numbers, A and B, and then it should divide the number B by the number A, but over the course of many months and years of maintenance by various different people, there have been some extra conditions added to this that are supposed to catch various bugs that were found at various points. Now this is a very small example and it looks a bit silly having all of this just for one line of division, but you can well imagine if this was a 150 line program and this condition had 17 subcomponents, it's very easy for the fifth person in the chain to make a small change without really understanding what he's breaking in the process. So, when it comes to assessing what we've broken and what's still working, what we need to do is a bit of testing. If we're going to run some tests on this program, we'll try a few values for A and B and we'll see if we get sensible results, we'll see if we cause the system to crash. But what we ultimately want to know is having tried 100 tests and 150 tests and 200 tests, at what point have we tested enough? At what point have we tried all the things that are reasonable to try and we think we've finished? So this is where code coverage comes in. What we're essentially doing with code coverage is, as we run our tests, analysing which bits of the code have been covered. Then once we think we've covered everything that's meaningful, we can stop testing because we think we've done. So if we go over to our little Erlang interpreter, there's a built-in module with Erlang called Cover, and we can cover compile our test example. So what we're doing there, by compiling it with Cover, we're taking that source file that we saw a minute ago, and we're inserting instrumentation into it. So every time a bit of that code is executed, the cover server gets a message. The cover server can log that that part of the code has now been executed, and we don't need to try that bit again, or maybe we will. So cover. If we output that code analysis to an HTML file, we can see the sorts of things that cover is analyzing. So here's the coverage file. As nothing has been run, everything is bright red because no one's touched anything. There's zero executions for any of these lines. Notice we're not bothering to track things like the end and the full stop at the end of it and the true that doesn't really get executed in a reasonable sense. We're only interested in lines that have some execution properties. So these are the three lines that we could hit in this program. If we drop back to our Erlang environment and we try a test, so first of all we're going to do A is 0, B is 5, and that's given us some sort of meaningful value. We rerun our analysis now. Reload this file. There we go. We can see that with A is 0 and B is 5, we come into the function, we execute this decision here. That decision turns out to be true, so we're going to execute this branch of the uh, program just there. That's been executed. But notice we haven't tried this half of the program. So whilst we've exercised this side of the program, we haven't exercised that side of the program. So our test is incomplete. We need to do some more testing before we've achieved line coverage for this program. So let's try another example. Let's try A is 5, B is 5. Now, with those two tests, you can see that we've covered both halves of the program. This decision has been executed twice. The first time round, it was true. We went into this branch. The second time round, it was false. So we've gone down to this branch. True as always true. We've executed that half. So that's line coverage. It's simply measuring which lines we have and haven't executed. Now, as far as line coverage is concerned, we're done. We've tested all of the bits of this program that are meaningful. Every line in the program has been tried at least once, so surely anything that could get wrong must have come up. Well, let's see what happens if we try something else. If we try 0 for A and 2, for example, for B, oh dear, it goes horribly, horribly wrong. We're getting a divide by 0 error, is what that's saying. So there's a flaw in this program, which is interesting, given that we've just managed to try both halves of it without detecting the flaw. But what we've actually tried is one of the ways of getting into this branch and one of the ways of getting into that branch. Now, what we really need to do is look at various different ways of getting into each branch. So there's several more complicated coverage analysis techniques. The, uh, the first ones to come to are decision and condition coverage. In that phraseology, this entire thing is called a decision because it's where you decide which way in the program you're going to go. And each of these subcomponents is called a condition. So decision coverage would require us to try every decision as both true and false at some point in the test suite. Condition coverage requires a test that makes each condition true and false somewhere in the test suite. So if we go back to our original program, actually the third one we need, we had 0, 5, we had 5, 5. Now if we do 5, 0, we can show 
that we've actually got complete decision and condition coverage. A was zero in some of the tests, A was not zero in other tests, B was more than five in four on some of the tests, B was less than four in some of the tests. So again, we've tried all of those combinations, but you'll notice we can do those things and still not hit the divide by zero error. However, me knowing it is fine. What we want is our analysis metric to show it up for us. This is then where MCDC coverage comes in. MCDC coverage requires not only that you try each condition for true and false, each decision true and false, but in loose terms it requires each way of making the decision true and false. So particular combinations of the conditions that make the decision true and make the decision false should all get tried. So this is where the smother tool comes in. Now smother has been developed to have a very similar interface to, uh, to cover, so we can smother compile things. And that does much the same thing. It's using the Wrangler refactoring tool suite to insert lots of uh, instrumentation into the appropriate points of the program. Now we can smother analyze to file. And we get a smother HTML file, which looks like this. Now notice at this point, we're now explicitly analyzing the decision points of the program, and we're not so interested in these sequential parts. If you've matched with this part of the tree and you've decided to go into this block, then you can guarantee that all the sequential parts in here will get executed. If you don't match this and you go onto a different branch, you can guarantee that none of the parts in here will get executed. So really, analyzing the execution of sequential parts isn't so important. It's the decision components that really matter. So if we now go back and we execute the tests we had a moment ago, so it was 0, 5, 5, 5, 5, 0, which we claim gives complete decision and condition coverage, but which doesn't find our problem. We can refresh this, and you can see each of the conditions has now gone green because we've got condition coverage. It's B is greater than 4, it was matched, it was made true in two of the tests, it was non-matched, so it was false in one of the tests, so it's been tried both true and false. Similarly, A equals 0, that was true once, it was not true twice. True, of course, is always true, but the question is whether you ever get there and execute it. So two of the tests did execute it, did match it, and of course it's not applicable to unmatch true. However, you notice the full decision is still labelled orange. Now, despite the fact that that's been both matched once and non-matched twice, it's got decision coverage, but it's the MCDC criteria at the bottom that are much more interesting. Here we've got a matrix showing when this uh, overall decision has been made false, what were the conditions like? So when it's been made false, some of those tests B was greater than 4, some of those tests B was less than 4. But when it was made false, A was never equal to 0. And that's the condition we've never managed to hit. Although we've tested the program with A equal 0, when it was 0, we've also had the condition that B was greater than 4. So the decision was true. What we've never done is falsified that decision whilst holding A equal 0. That's where our other test comes in. Since it's a conjunction, an and, we're only interested in falsifying the whole thing. If the thing's true, all of its conditions must be true. So what we need to do is find a way of falsifying that whilst holding A as 0. Well, the obvious way to do that is A is 0 and then B is something not greater than 4. So this is where our test comes back. A wants to be 0, B is anything that's not less than 4, and that shows our error. So now we can at least convince ourselves that we've achieved the coverage. Goes in green, yeah, we've now got 100% MCDC coverage. And that test suite does highlight the error that's in the program. So this is the increased power of MCDC testing, and it shows up a lot more problems. In fact, MCDC testing is required by various high integrity safety standards. But for Erlang, that's not the whole story. MCDC testing traditionally has been applied to imperative programming languages like C, where decisions are always made with these Boolean conditions. However, Erlang use a lot of functional programming paradigms. So Erlang programs can also have pattern matching decision making. Now this is, again is a very fictional example where we take the same problem and phrase it as a pattern match. We've got the pair with A and B and we're going to sort of match the explicit case where they're 0 and 5 and we're going to match the other case where nothing happens. But nonetheless the same process has gone through. If you give uh, a pattern match an argument it either matches or it doesn't but then when it doesn't match it's got various ways of which it can non-match. We can find that we've non-matched this pattern even though the first part was zero, the second part wasn't five. Vice versa, the first part was five, the second part wasn't zero. And various other conditions can happen that uh, get us through that. So we can demonstrate quickly what's going on there with smaller compile case test. Let's see if 
we try our same set of tests, 0, 5, 5, 5, 0, 5, 0. Now reload that. And we can see the same problem is expressed in terms of pattern matching. We failed to match the zero pattern whilst non-matching the, uh, the entire thing. There's some extra conditions at the bottom that don't make much sense in this example, but in a greater example, other ways to not match this pattern are simply give it something that's not a tuple in the first place, or give it something that's a tuple with four elements rather than three. And again, all of these can crop up in a real-world program, and it's worth testing them to make sure something happens. And a really obvious case where they can come up is a central part of Erlang, which is receiving messages. Now, Erlang is designed to do massively concurrent programming where there's hundreds of separate processes that are all sending and receiving messages from one another. The implementation of receiving messages, though, is done with pattern matching. So here we've got a receive statement that receives a message from something else, and this is designed to just catch these tuples containing tuples. You can see that these patterns can also be uh, expanded, have a guard over the pattern. Having matched the pattern, you then also apply a Boolean guard to the components of it. That needs the same MCDC condition coverage that we've uh, shown a moment ago. But that then allows us to do a real analysis of concurrent program testing, which doesn't exist in anything else. So that's a quick introduction to Smother. And the nice thing about Smother on top of cover is it's got some additional features, as well as simply getting the uh, coverage and so forth. You can get a list of all the things you've missed, a list of all the things you haven't missed, and you can get numerical percentage data and so on and so forth. All of this is quite useful if you want to use Smother as part of a bigger integrated test generation system or test analysis system. It's all available as Erlang data types through the interface. Smother itself, of course, is available on GitHub. It's an open source program. You're quite welcome to download it. If anyone does download it, please do send me any useful feedback. The documentation is available via the GitHub pages, and then there's an online edoc for anyone that uh, is interesting. So thanks very much for watching the video and uh, let me know how it goes.